और इसके साथ ही आमंत्रित करता हूँ डॉक्टर इंदिरा राजरामन को मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक व्यू फॉर इंडिया 2030 वो कैसे होगा प्रोफेसर माई यंग फ्रेंड्स इन दस आप माफ करेंगे मुझे कि मैं पूरा पूरा हिंदी में नहीं uh, बात कर पाऊंगी सो यू विल आई होप यू विल अलाउ मी टू स्पीक इन इंग्लिश लेकिन बीच बीच में मैं कुछ uh, टिप्पणियाँ हिंदी में कर सकती हूँ दॉपिक दैट वॉज गिवन टू मी टूडे वॉज इंडिया ट्वेंटी थर्टी ट्वेल्व ईयर्स हेंस अ मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक व्यू द प्रीवियस स्पीकर हु स्पोक ऑन एग्रीकल्चर कृषि के बारे में जो बात हुई थी उन्होंने सही कहा कि सिर्फ ग्रोथ से हम गरीबी नहीं मिटा सकते हैं हमारे देश में देर हैज़ टू बी अ स्ट्रैटी फॉर द रिमूवल ऑफ पॉवर्टी विच इज़ क्लोजली टाइड टू द एग्रीकल्चरल स्ट्रैटी दैट वी हैव बट माई द टॉपिक दैट हैज़ गिवन मी दैट हैज़ बीन गिवन टू मी टूडे इज अबाउट ग्रोथ Uh, overall growth and even though growth for whom is important in the first place you need growth before you discuss growth for whom growth ke bina hum growth for whom uh, ke bare mein nahi baat kar sakte hain so first of all we do need growth so this is part 1 uh, my introduction uh, and i will deal with the targets of this summit the very ambitious targets of this summit so um, as uh, you would have seen in the flyer that was given to you Uh, the uh, this this uh, summit is targeting um, a total gdp for india in trillion dollars us dollars of 10 trillion hamare hisab se trillion is lakh crore so uh, that is uh, 10 raised to the power of 12 uh, and this is at the official exchange rate uh, not at purchasing power parity uh if we uh, look at our current years uh, 2017 18 Uh, GDP in uh, US dollar, uh, then uh, we are roughly at 2.6. That little wiggle that you have in front of 2.6 is to indicate that that is an approximate figure. If we want to look at the required growth, itna growth karna hai humne ki from 2.6 today humne 10 tak uh, India ko pochana ho, so that will be roughly 11.9 percent per year. in nominal dollar terms but the dollar is not our currency the rupee is our currency and we also have to work out the required real growth uh, those of you who have studied economics know that real growth means the actual increase in goods and services we have to make some assumptions i am assuming that we will stay at 4% inflation which is our legislated uh, uh, target in terms of annual inflation and if we have a stable stable dollar exchange rate that works out uh, to a roughly 7.6% real growth per year so that is what we have to do we have to have a 7.6% real growth per year if we want to hit this very ambitious target of uh, an economy uh, with a size of 10 trillion uh, us dollars now uh, before i go into what we have to do to 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 get that 7.6% growth it's it looks doable Uh, the present year's growth has been uh, projected at 6.7%. Uh, probably uh, we may not get to 6.7% this year. So 7.6% is ambitious, but it is not beyond the realm of what is possible. Uh, so uh, let us see what our macroeconomic strengths are. A big economic strength, uh, which we should all as Indians be very proud of, is that we have never defaulted um, on our uh, external debt. Never. Uh, other countries have other countries even richer than ours have but we have never defaulted it's a very proud record uh, our external reserves today are at an all time high of 400 billion us dollars uh, monetary policy is in the hands of the reserve bank of india which carries international credibility and now is bound by an inflation target of 4%, 4% plus minus 2% fiscal policy and public debt are subjected to legislated limits हमारे एफ आर बी एम एक्ट है 
and borrowing by state governments is constitutionally subordinated to national control. And this last point that I have brought in is government at all levels are democratically elected. Uh, as you know, we've just had an election uh, in uh, one of the major states of the country. And I've introduced it deliberately among our macro macroeconomic strengths. Previous speakers, including uh, uh, Dr. Gulati, have referred to the extraordinary achievements of China. And because of this extraordinary achievement, both log dunya mein aur hamare desh mein bhi samajhte hain, China to wo sab kar sakte the kyunki wo democracy nahi the. Uh, they didn't have to worry about elections. They, the leadership of the country could just go ahead and do whatever they wanted to do. But, uh, so we have to look at what the economics literature says about the relationship between democracy and growth. Is democracy, democracy really bad for growth? And uh, there is a recent paper which I wanted to cite, um, which is very positive about the impact of democracy on growth. Uh, it is um, authored by Darren Asimoglu, who's a very famous uh, and well-respected uh, economist of Turkish origin in MIT, which is one of the premier institutions in America. Uh, and uh, this uh, paper challenges the widespread view stemming from the spectacular economic growth under non-democracy in China, uh, which has led to the view held by many people that democracy is at best irrelevant and at worst a hindrance for economic growth. They tested this paper, and uh, why I am citing this paper is not because we are thinking of moving to a non-democracy. I hope that will never happen. That will be a disaster. But what I want to look at is the channels through which their empirical work, your research on Nekia, they have found that democracy increases future GDP by encouraging investment, increasing schooling, improving provision of public goods, inducing economic reform and reducing social unrest. So these are the channels that we have to look at in terms of what we have to do if we want to get to 7.6% growth. So this is my outline. I've already done part one introduction. And I'm going to take the channels from that paper uh, one by one. Investment, schooling, public goods, reforms, cross-state cooperation. So I'll take them in turn. And I think I should finish by my allotted time of 20 minutes. I will ask my friend, uh, Dr. Alok, to signal me if I cross 20 minutes. Two minutes before uh, 8 o'clock. But I think I should be able to completely stick to that. So part two, which is about investment. Investment as a percentage of GDP in India has been steadily falling since 2011-12. And I have confined myself to the period of this new GDP series so that there is no quarrel about um, you know, different series and, and the difficulty of comparing across series. So you can see that in 2011-12, by the new series, gross fixed capital formation, that is that GFCF over there, it was a little under 35%, and now in 16-17, it has come down to 27%. So this is a steady decline. And you will remember from that paper that it says investment is very necessary. Please remember that I am in no way uh, countering uh, what Dr. Gulati said about how growth by itself is not sufficient. You need to look at growth for whom? Absolutely. But in the very first place, you do need investment. The composition of that investment does matter. What it is going into, is it going into irrigation as it should? Or is it going into useless things? All of that matters. But we are just now looking at the macro view. What is the overall percentage? So this is not very encouraging, that investment as a percentage of GDP in India has declined. However, there is some cause for um, comfort. And that is that the ratio between investment and real growth rates, which we call the incremental capital output ratio, that has also been declining, and that is good news. Why is that good news? It's good news because the, in the incremental capital output ratio tells us for 1% uh, uh, increase in, in, in for 1% for of growth, how many percentage points of investment as a percentage of GDP do you need? So you can see that in the beginning, in 11-12, 12-13 uh, actually, I had to shift the year because the data were not available for 11-12. You can see that the incremental capital output ratio was as high as six, which means that for every percentage point of growth, 
you needed six percentage uh, points in terms of investment as a percentage of GDP. That has also been falling to what is now in the neighborhood of four. Now, for 1% uh, growth, we need only four percentage points of investment. That's very good news. If we can keep the I-Core at this level, then for 7.6% growth, we just need to lift investment as a percentage of GDP to 30.4%. We are now at 27, we need to lift it to 30.4%. That is hopefully doable. And in order to do that, of course, we do have to improve uh, the ease of doing business in this country, not just at the upper end, but all across the scale spectrum. We need to enable people in the rural areas of India to sell up, set up small industries, whatever it may be, bicycle mechanics, um, uh, scooter repairers, uh, in order to cater to the local market. Uh, and the World Bank's um, uh, ease of doing business, we have risen in 2018. India has risen in rank to uh, 200 from 130. And uh, the countries at rank one uh, were Singapore and New Zealand. Uh, we have a lot to learn from Singapore, as you will see as I go along. So I'm now going to go into part three, which is about skills and schooling. And here, th the, the story is not very good at all. And this is what we need to worry most about. There is an organization called Pratham. Shayad uh, aapne suna hoga Pratham. This organization, it's an NGO. They do an annual survey of, the, 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 of schooling in this country. Um, the, uh, the annual uh, survey of um, education. Uh, it's called ASAR. Hmm? Um, annual school education report, ASAR. Uh, and the latest report is 2016. The 2017 report will come out in January 2018. What they do is, they don't do a school-based sampling of children, they do a household-based sampling of children, and they do it in rural areas. And this is why um, uh, I think it is so very important to focus on the ASA reports, because it is from the rural areas that we are going to get all the young people coming into the labor force. So the schooling that they have received is extremely important. They have uh, a sample in the most recent report of uh, 562,000 roughly children from 350,000 households in 589 rural districts. So it's a nationwide survey. And what they find is that as far as enrollment is concerned, whether you're talking about six to 14 years or 15 to 16 years, it's not too bad at all. Uh, I think enrollment in the age 15 to 16 years at nearly 85% is pretty good. That means that the dropout rate is not so bad. Uh, the enrollment in private schools is roughly steady at 30%. So out of 10 children in rural areas, three go to private schools, seven go to government schools. Because seven go to government schools, we have to worry a great deal about uh, the state of affairs in those government schools. Here comes the sad uh, story that the ASA report reveals. Standard eight student who could read at least a standard two text, jo, jo standard two may, may padna hoga, Wo, that is the highest level they test for. And they found that only 75%, yani char bacho me se sirf teen bache, was in standard eight, standard two ka test uh, pad sakte the, or samaj sakte the. The, uh, the, 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 the bottommost line here is even worse. Standard eight students who could correctly do a three digit by one digit division. That is like dividing the number 899 by seven. 68% could do it in 2010. That percentage came down to 44% in 2014, and it has further come down to 43.3% in 2016. When we get the 2017 report next month, we'll have to see whether that percentage has dropped more or whether it has actually gone up a little bit. Now this is extremely worrying because if our demographic um, advantage, which is these beautiful young people who are coming into the labor force, you are among them. Um, if on average, we are not talking about the schooling you in particular received or your achievement, but on average across this country, if they are not learning basic skills, then they cannot function effectively even in agriculture. 
And I may take example dungi to, to li link it up with what the previous uh, speaker, Dr. Gulati, said. Ab jante honge ki one of the initiatives of this uh, present government is to distribute soil health cards. Soil health cards uh, ka udesh ye hai ki farmers uh, uh, ko uh, pat pata kare ki un unka soil ka kya composition hai aur kitne fertilizers uh, dalne ho usme. But if the farmers of tomorrow cannot read, cannot do arithmetic, cannot understand, and that is already happening. Farmers are receiving soil health cards which they are not using at all. So th all this expenditure on the soil health card scheme is going to waste. They are just applying fertilizers as they have always applied fertilizers. So in order even to improve agricultural pr productivity, uh, we need to have basic literacy and basic numeracy in the population. And this, our school system, is not delivering so far, unfortunately. As far as school infrastructure is concerned, there has been substantial improvement, probably because of the Sarv Shiksha Ab Abhyan. This was done from a survey of 15,630 rural government schools. As you can see, usable toilet facilities, usable girls' toilets, drinking water availability, quite impressive at 74% libraries. So there has been an improvement in infrastructure, which means that girls and boys will more readily go to school if there is a school where there are toilet facilities and drinking water, but the quality of education has to improve. And last, um, I will just conclude with uh, something that um, we should uh, take on board. You know, there is, just as you have the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Survey, there is also something, an international survey of school achievement. It's called the Program for International Student Assessment, PISA. And it is a test of 15-year-old schol scholastic performance. It was started in 2000 and is repeated every year, 2000, then 2003, and then 2006, 2009, and so on. Um, the uh, uh, 2015 round uh, was published in December 2016. Singapore is top ranked in all three components, mathematics, science, and reading. Now, Singapore is a country not very far from India, and it has close links to India. Uh, if you have ever gone to Singapore, you will find that all the signs uh, in, in, in the airport um, are uh, in, in English and in Chinese and in Tamil, which is an Indian language. Uh, that tells you the size of the Indian diaspora in, in Singapore. So, jo Singapore ke achievements hai, hamare Indians bhi usme jude hue hai. Aisa nahi hai ki hum is tarah ke achievements nahi kar paate hai. We are citizens of Singapore where these top-ranked achievements are being recorded. So it is not that something is wrong with us as Indians. Our system is not working for us. And we need to look at Singapore. Singapore is a neighboring country. We need to look at them, ki ye log aise kaise kar paate hain, kya kar rahe hain? That in every international ranking, whether it's ease of doing business or school achievement, Singapore is on top. Um, India participated only in the 2009 round. And we permitted the, the survey to be done only in two states, Himachal Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, because these are the two states which are best known for their schooling achievement. The 2009 report does not include India in the official rankings because India pulled out uh, after they learned how badly we had done. But it was widely reported that India stood second last. And the only country which did worse than India was Kazakhstan. So this is very sad. We have Singapore, which has so many Indian citizens that their airport signs are in Tamil. And uh, we have India, where we have all of us, and we are doing so badly. So uh, I'm mentioning this because of that research paper I started out with, which said you have to have investment, you have to have schooling. We need to have tremendous improvement on the schooling front. Otherwise, we are not going to get anywhere. Part four, public good. What is a public good? Several uh, uh, previous speakers, I think all of them, in fact, have mentioned the Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana. That is a, 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 a textbook example of a public good. A public good, as it is here, just say, Harek Admi, Harek Vyakti ko lab milti hai. Just like a Sadak. When a pra Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana links up a village with the road network, 
देन एवरीबडी कैन यूज दैट रोल हर व्यक्ति उस उस ग्राम में इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं और बाहर लोग भी इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं कोई ऐसा नहीं है कि इसको मिलेगा और इसको नहीं मिलेगा ना दी ग्रेट एम्फोसिस विच इज गिवेन इन आ पब्लिक डिस्कोर्स इज नॉट सो मच टू पब्लिक गुड्स डिस्पाइट प्रधानमंत्री ग्राम सड़क योजना सो इट्स अ ग्रेट प्रोग्राम आई ऑलवेज साइट इट एज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द काइंड ऑफ पब्लिक गुड वी नीड and it is important for improving agricultural productivity also but in our public discourse we discuss much more beneficiary targeting now narega is an example of a beneficiary targeted program garib logon ko income dene ke liye it's it's not that we don't need such programs we need them because hamare desh mein garib logon ki sankhya bahut zyada hai but as you can see from that research paper what you really need to do if you need to build up an economy into an engine which will work for everybody then you do need to have a lot of emphasis on public goods unlike beneficiary targeting what is what is narega narega is giving uh, income to the hands of poor people because they are not able to make a living on their own they apne khud ke effort se nahi ho pa raha hai so we are giving them some scheme from which बेचारे कुछ ना कुछ इनकम मिले जिसे वो कुछ uh, खा पाए और और, और जिंदा रह पाए सो पब्लिक गुड्स आर व्हाट वी नीड इफ वी वांट टू इंप्रूव द एबिलिटी ऑफ पीपल टू मेक अ लाइवलीहुड ऑन देयर ओन एंड हियर आई विल जस्ट लुक एट द सेंट्रल स्कीम्स व्हिच वर बजटेड इन 2016-17 दिस इज आफ्टर द 14th फाइनेंस कमीशन द सेंट्रल स्कीम्स वर ग्रेटली रिड्यूस्ड इन नंबर and uh they were reduced to three categories something called core of the core and there was core and optional and you can see that in core of the core which is what the central government considers to be terribly important the share of public goods is zero uh the you can see that in core the share of public goods is much higher at 88% and in optional it is 100% overall the share of public goods in across all these central schemes is 66% it's not bad but uh, that is uh, you can see the relative importance that is given to beneficiary targeting and you can see that overall as a share of the total core of the core accounts for 25% and the core uh, and optional account for the rest i'm going to go into the last part uh, economic reforms across states um the department of industrial promotion and policies has been ranking states on reforms as part of the make in india campaign in december 2014 now of course this is a department of industrial promotion and policy so uh, this is not about agriculture but we do need industry in our country uh, and uh, in 2017 uh, they have started a new program whereby states will be ranked in terms of feedback from ground level experience of businesses so uh, a state cannot uh, stand up and say bhaiya humne to bahut madad ki ye small scale industry hamare state mein hum bahut madad karte hain koi rukawat nahi hai they can set up bijli ka connection pani ka connection sab kuch ek do din mein mil jate hain they don't go by that they go and ask uh, do a ground level survey and ask at the ground level bhaiya ye ye sach hai कि आपको बिजली पानी का कनेक्शन मिल रहा है तो दिस इज अ टोटली डिफरेंट अप्रोच विच हैज बीन अडॉप्टेड बाय दिस गवर्नमेंट वेरी कमेंडेबली एंड दिस इज अ प्रॉमिसिंग एवेन्यू फॉर एनकरेजिंग क्रॉस स्टेट कंपटीशन स्टेट्स आर नाउ सो कीन टू बी एट द टॉप ऑफ दिस रैंकिंग विद इन इंडिया दैट दे आर रियली ट्राइंग टू इम्प्रूव दैर परफॉर्मेंस सो दैट देर इज दिस काइंड ऑफ ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन टू बिजनेस इज सेटिंग अप we also we need constructive cooperation between states but we also uh, constructive competition between states as i said but we also need cooperation between states towards a common purpose and um, uh, there is there is no cross party cooperation uh, on a common national agenda desired by all such as water conservation raising agricultural productivity or reversing river and air pollution तो ये ऐसे उद्देश्य हैं जैसे वाटर कंजर्वेशन, एग्रीकल्चरल प्रोडक्टिविटी रिवर एंड एयर पोल्यूशन ये ऐसे उद्देश्य हैं जो सबके उद्देश्य हैं होने चाहिए लेकिन 
there is very poor record of cross-party competition, uh, uh, cooperation uh, to achieve these goals which are common to all states. For example, recently in November, as you know, children, babies, old people, and even people in their productive years suffered terribly from asthma, breathing difficulties. Some of them were not able to go to work at all because Delhi, Haryana, and Punjab, neighboring states, were not able to secure a ban on burning of crop residue, which has led to November air over this region, uh, region reach, uh, reaching the top of air pollution international ranking. Um, international headlines, we were, uh, the, the state of air pollution in Delhi was reaching international headlines. Ustara ke rankings mein hum number one ranking uh, position nahi chaate hain. We don't want to be at the top of air pollution rankings. But why could not these three states cooperate? Punjab presently has a Congress government. Haryana has a BJP government. Delhi has an AAP government. And they could, they could not cooperate. As you have seen, even from this Gujarat election that we have had, our political parties are giving one another. They are giving one another. And they can't understand that we are a हम हमारे देश के वासियों को सर्व करना है और इसमें हम सक्सेस नहीं प्राप्त करेंगे जब तक हम एक दूसरे को गाली दे रहे हैं। We have to cooperate and I wish that the election in Gujarat and in Himachal had been conducted in such a way that every party said हाँ हम मानते हैं कि एक और पार्टी आपके वोट्स के लिए पूछ रहा है, लेकिन आप हमें आपके वोट्स दे दीजिए, क्योंकि हम ऐसे करेंगे, वैसे करेंगे, आपको पानी दिलाएंगे, आपको आपका आपका इकोनॉमिक स्टेटस को बढ़ाएंगे। That would be good if they focused on what they will do for the people. But जब एक दूसरे को गाली दे रहे हैं, तो इलेक्शन विक्ट्री के बाद ये नहीं हो सकता कि वो कोऑपरेट the memory of that bitter uh, election struggle will remain. And this kind of cooperation will not be possible. So the, uh, the, the discourse between political parties has to change in our country. Democracy is an advantage, I still think so. And I agree with that, the authors of that paper that it is indeed an advantage, but we have to change the nature of our political discourse. There is also destructive electoral competition between national governments and state governments for political ownership of public expenditure. And that is why there is such a preference for beneficiary targeting and, and even for preferential targeting even of public goods. So for instance, supposing there is a Narega, which is beneficiary target. So when the national election comes in 2019, the, uh, uh, part, uh, the ruling party can go to uh, the voter all across the country and say, Hamne tumko uh, fayda dilaya, Ye, tumko, or, or whatever it is, whatever beneficiaries have of their various programs, ye hum, humare taraf se hai, ye state government se nahi aya. Whereas with public goods, everybody benefits and it's difficult to have political ownership. So what we need in our country now is not bitter political competition between parties, but statesmanship, where uh, someone who is elected says, thank you to the voters, thank you for electing us. Now we will include all parties in a cross-party platform to improve the status of the Indian people. Conclusions. Real GDP growth of 7.6% per annum, which is consistent, which is what we need if we want to reach uh, Mr. Samir Kocher's uh, prescribed targets in 2030 is a desirable target, but it will be difficult to reach without deep structural reform. <laughs> Fundamental structural reform calling for cooperation between all levels of government, central, state, and local. Uh, this crop burning residue, uh, uh, burning of crop residue, uh, it simply cannot be solved even at the state government level. There has to be involvement of panchayats in this effort. We have to improve the quality of primary education in government schools along with the health status and safety of these children. Uh, there's no question about the fact that if the, the children are in poor health, they cannot absorb the education that is given to them. 
We have to improve the ease of doing business so as to ramp up investment at all scale levels from micro to large scale. We have to enable the opening of small businesses in villages catering to the local population and large businesses catering either to the domestic market or to export markets. And we have to imp improve the quality of public goods such as access to sanitation, clean water, and clean air. Jai Hind.